Chapter 9. Persistence, the sustained effort necessary to induce faith. The eighth step toward riches persistence is an essential factor in the procedure of transmuting desire into its monetary equivalent. The basis of persistence is the power of will. Will power and desire, when properly combined, make an irresistible pair. Men who accumulate great fortunes are generally known as cold-blooded and sometimes ruthless. Often they are misunderstood. What they have is willpower, which they mix with persistence and place back of their desires to ensure the attainment of their objectives. Henry Ford has been generally misunderstood to be ruthless and cold-blooded. This misconception grew out of Ford's habit of following through in all of his plans with persistence. The majority of people are ready to throw their aims and purposes overboard and give up at the first sign of opposition or misfortune. A few carry on despite all opposition until they attain their goal. These few are the Fords, Carnegies, Rockefellers, and Edisons. There may be no heroic connotation to the word persistence, but the quality is to the character of man what carbon is to steel. The building of a fortune, generally, involves the application of the entire 13 factors of this philosophy. These principles must be understood, they must be applied with persistence by all who accumulate money. If you are following this book with the intention of applying the knowledge it conveys, your first est as to your persistence will come when you begin to follow the six steps described in the second chapter. Unless you are one of the two out of every hundred who already have a definite goal at which you are aiming, and a definite plan for its attainment, you marry the instructions, and then pass on with your daily routine, and never comply with those instructions. The author is checking you up at this point, because lack of persistence is one of the major causes of failure. Moreover, experience with thousands of people has proved that lack of persistence is a weakness common to the majority of men. It is a weakness which may be overcome by effort. The ease with which lack of persistence may be conquered will depend entirely upon the intensity of one's desire. The starting point of all achievement is desire. Keep this constantly in mind. Weak desires bring weak results, just as a small amount of fire makes a small amount of heat. If you find yourself lacking in persistence, this weakness may be remedied by building a stronger fire under your desires. Continue to read through to the end, then go back to chapter 2 and start immediately to carry out the instructions given in connection with the six steps. The eagerness with which you follow these instructions will indicate clearly how much or how little you really desire to accumulate money. If you find that you are indifferent, you may be sure that you have not yet acquired the money consciousness which you must possess before you can be sure of accumulating a fortune. Fortunes gravitate to men whose minds have been prepared to attract them just as surely as water gravitates to the ocean. In this book may be found all the stimuli necessary to attune any normal mind to the vibrations which will attract the object of one's desires. If you find you are weak in persistence, center your attention upon the instructions contained in the chapter on power, surround yourself with a mastermind group, and through the cooperative efforts of the members of this group, you can develop persistence. You will find additional instructions for the development of persistence in the chapters on auto-suggestion and the subconscious mind. Follow the instructions outlined in these chapters until your habit nature hands over to your subconscious mind a clear picture of the object of your desire. From that point on, you will not be handicapped by lack of persistence. Your subconscious mind works continuously while you are awake and while you are asleep. Spasmodic or occasional effort to apply the rules will be of no value to you. To get results, you must apply all of the rules until their application becomes a fixed habit with you. In no other way can you develop the necessary money consciousness. Poverty is attracted to the one whose mind is favorable to it, as money is attracted to him whose mind has been deliberately prepared to attract it, and through the same laws. Poverty consciousness will voluntarily seize the mind which is not occupied with the money consciousness. A poverty consciousness develops without conscious application of habits favorable to it. The money consciousness must be created to order, unless one is born with such a consciousness. Catch the full significance of the statements in the preceding paragraph and you will understand the importance of persistence in the accumulation of a fortune. Without persistence, you will be defeated even before you start. With persistence you will win. If you have ever experienced a nightmare, you will realize the value of persistence. You are lying in bed, half awake, with a feeling that you are about to smother. You are unable to turn over or to move a muscle. You realize that you must begin to regain control over your muscles. Through persistent effort of willpower, you finally manage to move the fingers of one hand. By continuing to move your fingers, you extend your control to the muscles of one arm until you can lift it. Then you gain control of the other arm in the same manner. 
You finally gain control over the muscles of one leg and then extend it to the other leg, then with one supreme effort of will you regain complete control over your muscular system and snap out of your nightmare. The trick has been turned step by step, you may find it necessary to snap out of your mental inertia through a similar procedure, moving slowly at first, then increasing your speed until you gain complete control over your will. Be persistent no matter how slowly you may, at first, have to move. With persistence will come success. If you select your mastermind group with care, you will have in it at least one person who will aid you in the development of persistence. Some men who have accumulated great fortunes did so because of necessity. They developed the habit of persistence because they were so closely driven by circumstances that they had to become persistent. There is no substitute for persistence, it cannot be supplanted by any other quality. Remember this and it will hearten you in the beginning when the going may seem difficult and slow. Those who have cultivated the habit of persistence seem to enjoy insurance against failure. No matter how many times they are defeated, they finally arrive up toward the top of the ladder. Sometimes it appears that there is a hidden guide whose duty is to test men through all sorts of discouraging experiences. Those who pick themselves up after defeat and keep on trying, arrive, and the world cries, bravo. I knew you could do it. The hidden guide lets no one enjoy great achievement without passing the persistence test. Those who can take it simply do not make the grade. Those who can take it are bountifully rewarded for their persistence. They receive, as their compensation, whatever goal they are pursuing. That is not all. They receive something infinitely more important than material compensation, the knowledge that every failure brings with it the seed of an equivalent advantage. There are exceptions to this rule, a few people know from experience the soundness of persistence. They are the ones who have not accepted defeat as being anything more than temporary. They are the ones whose desires are so persistently applied that defeat is finally changed into victory. We who stand on the sidelines of life see the overwhelmingly large number who go down in defeat, never to rise again. We see the few who take the punishment of defeat as an urge to greater effort. These, fortunately, never learn to accept life's reverse gear. But what we do not see, what most of us never suspect of existing, is the silent but irresistible power which comes to the rescue of those who fight on in the face of discouragement. If we speak of this power at all we call a persistence and let it go at that. One thing we all know, if one does not possess persistence, one does not achieve noteworthy success in any calling. As these lines are being written, I look up from my work and see before me, less than a block away, the great mysterious Broadway the graveyard of dead hopes and the front porch of opportunity. From all over the world people have come to Broadway, seeking fame, fortune, power, love, or whatever it is that human beings call success. Once in a great while someone steps out from the long procession of seekers and the world hears that another person has mastered Broadway. But Broadway is not easily nor quickly conquered. She acknowledges talent, recognizes genius, pays often money, only after one has refused to quit, then we know he has discovered the secret of how to conquer Broadway. The secret is always inseparably attached to one word, persistence. The secret is told in the struggle of Fanny Hurst, whose persistence conquered the great white way. She came to New York in 1915 to convert riding into riches. The conversion did not come quickly, but it came. For four years Miss Hurst learned about the sidewalks of New York from first-hand experience. She spent her days laboring and her nights hoping. When hope grew dim, she did not say, all right Broadway, you win. She said, very well, Broadway, you may whip some, but not me. I'm going to force you to give up. One publisher, the Saturday Evening Post, sent her 36 rejection slips before she broke the ice and got a story across. The average writer, like the average in other walks of life, would have given up the job when the first rejection slip came. She pounded the pavements for four years to the tune of the publisher's no, because she was determined to win. Then came the payoff. The spell had been broken, the unseen guide had tested Fanny Hurst, and she could take it. From that time on publishers, made a beaten path to her door. Money came so fast she hardly had time to count it. Then the moving picture men discovered her, and money came not in small change, but in floods. The moving picture rights to her latest novel, Great Laughter, brought $100,000, said to be the highest price ever paid for a story before publication. Her royalties from the sale of the book probably will run much more. Briefly, you have a description of what persistence is capable of achieving. Fanny Hurst is no exception. Wherever men and women accumulate great riches, you may be sure they first acquire persistence. 
Broadway will give any beggar a cup of coffee and a sandwich, but it demands persistence of those who go after the big stakes. Kate Smith will say amen when she reads this. For years she sang, without money and without price, before any microphone she could reach. Broadway said to her, come and get it, if you can take it. She did take it until one happy day Broadway got tired and said, aw, oh, what's the use? You don't know when you're whipped, so name your price and go to work in earnest. Miss Smith named her price? It was plenty. The way up in figures so high that one week's salary is far more than most people make in a whole year. Verily it pays to be persistent? And here is an encouraging statement which carries with it a suggestion of great significance. Thousands of singers who excel Kate Smith are walking up and down Broadway looking for a break without success. Countless others have come and gone, many of them sang well enough, but they failed to make the grade because they lack the courage to keep on keeping on until Broadway became tired of turning them away. Persistence is a state of mind, therefore it can be cultivated. Like all states of mind, persistence is based upon definite causes, among them these. A definiteness of purpose. Knowing what one wants is the first and, perhaps, the most important step toward the development of persistence. A strong motive forces one to surmount many difficulties. B. Desire. It is comparatively easy to acquire and to maintain persistence in pursuing the object of intense desire. C. Self-reliance. Belief in one's ability to carry out a plan encourages one to follow the plan through with persistence. Self-reliance can be developed through the principle described in the chapter on auto-suggestion. D. Definiteness of plans. Organize plans, even though they may be weak and entirely impractical, encourage persistence. E. Accurate knowledge. Knowing that one's plans are sound, based upon experience or observation, encourages persistence. Guessing instead of knowing destroys persistence. F. Cooperation. Sympathy, understanding, and harmonious cooperation with others tend to develop persistence.